Alright guys. It is just a gray, gloomy, yuck, rainy Tuesday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization out here in the Point Lonesome Swamp deep in the oasis of freedom. And it is a gloomy Tuesday morning, January 25th, I believe, 2022. So anyway, uh, with a little bit of trepidation, I am going <laughs> to read the excellent latest post by a uh, fellow Doomer and Collapsitarian, Elliot Richardson, the, uh, the new kid on the block down here <laughs> in, in the Doomosphere, uh, learning to, he's, I, I guess Elliot is learning to traverse the minefield uh, uh, of the Doomosphere, but we're certainly glad to have Elliot uh, join us down here and now, last time I read uh, an essay from Elliot Richardson, it caused quite a bit of unintentional doomer drama. So hopefully uh, that will not be uh, elicited by this one. And this is uh, <clears throat> from Elliot, his latest piece in his excellent blog, Watching the World Go By, spelled B-Y-E, which he calls uh, Elliot Jacobson's climate change blog. Elliot calls this a climate change blog, but he's, I think he's uh, getting into the wider field of collapse in more and more of his essays. I'm a little unclear about his title. Maybe he's being ironic. The title of this essay is called The Demise of Hopium. The Demise of Hopium. Uh, well, Elliot, are you being ironic or are you just speaking for yourself? Uh, I mean, as far as I can see, uh, all I can see is a meteoric rise and hopium, which, which is to be expected uh, as we, you know, get deeper and deeper into collapse. This is kind of the modern version of the cargo cult. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you can find that else, <clears throat> elsewhere. But despite the uh, ironic title, at least in my opinion, the demise of hopium, this is one of the best descriptions, at least, of hopium I have ever read. And uh, so, and again, guys, I hope that this camera and this battery are not going to collapse in the middle of this. Uh, if they do, <clears throat> I will put the link on here, and you can just read this yourself. But if you just want to sit around and wash the dishes while I'm reading this to you, so he starts out with two definitions of hopium from yourdictionary.com, an irrational or unwarranted optimism, and number two from the Doomer for Dummies blog spot, which I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is Gail Zawacki's definition. Uh, I think this is Gail's. <clears throat> that deranged condition in which a person is deluded into thinking humanity will survive omnicide. Okay, now that we know what we're talking about, this is, I guess, uh, Elliot Jacobson bidding farewell to hopium in his own life. Take it away, Elliot. <clears throat> I am not here to relitigate the inevitability of the near-term collapse of global industrial civilization and the obvious consequence that billions of humans will suffer terribly as a result. Collapse is the end point of overshoot and overpopulation and it has already begun. <clears throat> 
While the speed of the collapse may be altered by various projects, plans, and efforts, the end result will not change. Exponential growth on a finite planet is unsustainable, period. Hopium pervades the climate change and environmental movements. It festers in every green industry, boils in the rhetorical language of world bodies like the UN and the IPCC, is demanded in academic journal articles and grants, and lands like a heavy-handed thud as a tool of suppression by the media and popular authors. Hopium is a psychoactive medication, an addiction, a coping mechanism, and a group therapy session. <laughs> Hopium offers escape from the nightmarish reality the planet is plummeting towards. Hopium is a delusional distraction fostered by mass media politicians and academics, and hopium is harming us by creating more suffering and restricting free choice. The rhetorical catalog for hopium includes the use of phrases like, we need to, or we must, or if we don't. <clears throat> These phrases divide humanity into the we, good, and others, bad, others are bad. The point is to identify a goal or policy that, if achieved, will mitigate collapse. A group who are willing to pursue the goal and a group who are obstructing the goal. Implicit in all such rhetoric is the belief that mitigating collapse is possible, that if we do this thing, then humanity will be better positioned to continue on its merry way, basking in eternal sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns. That is the hopium part. Hopium comes in a variety of toxicities from the virtually non-toxic single-line addenda at the end of a research article, usually included at the insistence of some editor, to the most toxic form wielded as a weapon to silence rational discourse and to deceive for profit <clears throat> Examples of the barely toxic variety of hopium is ubiquitous. Here are two examples linked to their source if you want to read more. Example number one, we desperately need transformative change to avert the worst of the climate and ecological crises. Or we have this one, we must rein in corporations and the rich, yes, who have learned over the centuries how to capture media and politics entrenched and are now much harder to rein in. There you go. <clears throat> Examples of the worst form of toxic hopium include the most insidious and darkest gaslighting employed by cynics and profiteers. For example, Exxon's doublespeak in their document, our position on climate policy and carbon pricing, making the naive reader believe that Exxon gives a F about something other than profit, quoting Exxon. <clears throat> Quote, we think it is vitally important 
for the cost of reducing carbon to be more transparent to enable comparisons of the various options to help policymakers reduce emissions at the lowest overall cost to society. Close quote. Or this bit of toxic opium in the COP22 final Glasgow Pact asserting credibility that simply does not exist. I have mentioned this one already in a Hopium Roundup. Bears repeating directly from COP26, quote, We can now say with credulity that we have kept one and a half degrees alive, but its pulse is weak and it will only survive if we keep our promises and translate commitments into rapid action." Close quote. So, what is actually wrong with hopium? What damage does it really do? <clears throat> the suffering brought on by overshoot and collapse is evident everywhere. Species in record numbers are going extinct. Our fellow humans are dying from heat, starvation, thirst, floods, fires, and disease. Human culture and legacy are becoming historical relics. Quite simply, many of us would make different choices if we knew with absolute certainty that this shit was coming down soon to where we live, our home, our life. The constant drumbeat of the hopium big lie is keeping people from taking actions they might otherwise take. On being told the truth about our collective future, some folks might clear the air with family members. Others might find themselves having deeper conversations and connections with friends. Some might volunteer to help those in greatest need or make substantial donations. Some would quit their jobs, cash in their savings, and party as much as they could in the time remaining. Some would continue their efforts to delay collapse and lessen the full impact of the ongoing sixth great extinction. Some may join adaptive communities or survivalist cults. Some may commit suicide. Some will still have still have hope, and one person will be the last person to plant a tree. In short, if the truth about climate change and collapse was widely addressed by politicians, media, and scientists, societal norms would quickly crumble. Right now, hopium is the glue holding the wreck of our failed society together. Hopium is what is staving off chaos and anarchy. Just maybe there are one or two brilliant scientists who know this analysis with certainty and view their mission of pushing hopium to the masses at its full meta level. After all, without a functioning society, you cannot sell many books. This oddly benevolent possibility is acknowledged in this remarkable attack on doomers by Michael Mann, published in The Guardian in 2021, quoting the hopium uh, monger Michael Mann, quote, <clears throat> Doom mongering has overtaken denial as a threat and as a tactic 
in, in activists know that if people believe there is nothing you can do, they are led, led down a path of disengagement. They unwittingly do the bidding of fossil fuel interest by giving up. What is so pernicious about this is that it seeks to weaponize environmental progressives who would otherwise be on the frontier demanding change. Close quote. Back to uh, Elliot. In man's war, the environmentalists are his unwitting soldiers, his we fighting his meaningless battles to preserve a failing civilization. His others consist of both oil companies and doomers. Preservation of the status quo is the goal of the stories he weaves, allowing the elite to enjoy their wealth and privilege for one more day. The demise, okay, here is where he explains his title, the demise of hopium is coming one way or another because collapse is already here and is accelerating. Unfortunately for man and others like him, the demise of hopium will cause many to rightfully lose their credibility. For others, their admission would be a noble act or even an act of martyrdom. And for some, it will be an act of desperation or required by a boss or psychologically self-soothing. But most of all, the demise of hopium will allow humans to regain their agency. This brainwashing, greenwashing, fucking lie that pervades every aspect of culture, media, and politics will be gone. Yes, some people, some people will go down a path of disengagement, as man says, but that will be their choice and disengagement will not be wrong just because it does not fit man's agenda for what they should be doing. The truth will allow every one of us to be free to think and talk about our near future unencumbered by hopium-laced falsehoods to reevaluate life and reassess our values and plans. Contrary to what hopium peddlers believe, most people are capable of having competent moments of rational thought. The demise of hopium will be the beginning of the freedom to regain our critical judgment about the most important moment in our lives and in the history of humanity and the planet. It cannot come soon enough. Be kind. Be generous. Be of service. And he wants to offer gratitude to his sister Hillary for sharing her deep insights on hopium. A few of the best sentences in the article are directly hers. Awesome sister. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, we now uh, understand the seemingly ironic title of the demise of hopium. Uh, we shall see uh, but the hopium uh, will only get more and more entrenched as this whole 
ball of wax uh, comes flying apart. Uh, I assure you of that. And uh, I'm getting the... Uh, did, did, did I introduce Elliot Jacobson as Elliot Richardson? <laughs> At the very beginning, brother, if, if I if uh, I, I was just reading uh, something about Elliot Richardson right before I went to bed last night, and uh, <laughs> just so everyone understand, Elliot Jacobson is not Elliot Richardson. So I I, I uh, hope I did not uh, <laughs> have that little uh, faux pas. Anyway, I have got to wrap up today's uh, dose of uh, topium assassination and uh, figure out my own path of disengagement uh, on this gloomy day in the collapse. And I highly suggest you get out there and start figuring out your own path to negotiate uh, what is coming our way. Bye, guys.